All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D uh, RPG in Unity tutorial. And today we are covering uh, friggin' conversations. That's the one. So you press E, you click through conversation choices, and based on those choices, like I've got a thing that will execute a line of code that you've written. So say it could make enemies hostile or whatever. So let's go demo this. Uh, so you'll see. Uh, our conversation will be with this NPC here, and I press E, and it will say this phrase, selling an unrelated product, you know, I mean, it's loud or quiet game, it could be really good, and on November 20th, it's soon, you could, you know, go buy it or something. So let's choose one of these options, so sure, why not, I'm cool, and he'll say thanks, and he leaves. But what if we say we don't want to buy it, you know? Well, we'll do that again. So I'll just click uh, E here. Let's not choose to buy loud or quiet, but I don't know why you do that. And they'll go boo, and then they'll get a gun and be hostile to you. So yeah, let's go see how this was all implemented. Okay, so first up, I just needed to make uh, need to make a quick alteration to the uh, pathfinding. Uh, basically, one problem I noticed was that it would, uh, if uh, an NPC tried to either start the path or end the path on an unwalkable node, it would basically go, have to go through all the tiles in the grid to basically work out that there was no path that they could get from that starting location, which caused a massive like performance spike and it was really noticeable, so I had to fix that. Uh, basically, what I've done is, so as normal, we start by getting the world tile or finding the nearest world tile to whatever position, game object's position has been passed into the find path method. And next up, uh, we basically just check if the node that we found isn't walkable, we'll get the near user's new method called get nearest walkable tile with the grid X and grid Y. And similarly for the end node. And yeah, so that'll basically check the neighbors of the unwalkable tile that's been passed in. So if it has a adjacent tile which is walkable, then it'll pass that in. Otherwise, if the node's still null, so if it can't find a walkable tile next to this tile, next to the tile that it's originally checking, then it will just return null that. So you'll have end node being null if there are no walkable tiles adjacent to this, this unwalkable tile. And at which point it will return null, so we can't get a path, and then we'll just return and not do anything. So we'll have to go through all the stuff. Simple. And that is basically here. Uh, this was basically, uh, I believe, oh, who is it? I should remember this. Uh, someone else's implementation of A star. I just wanted to make sure that the alg it wasn't the algorithm, but it turns out it was just the bugs, so. Uh, not Brocky. Stephen something. I should remember this, but I don't. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah. Uh, basically, what the near is the local tile does it, is it takes in the tiles at the grid X and grid Y provided. So you just basically just grab that from the uh, world tile script here. And it'll go through all the neighbors in that tile because we store the neighbors of the. Uh, well, tile anyway. And if t.walkable is true, we return t. Uh, otherwise, if we can't find any walkable tiles, we just return null. And that'll give us our cancelling condition for not finding a path. Okay. Uh, also, next up on Action Hunt Player, I've made a couple of changes. So, first off, you'll notice it has a rate hit the player. So, basically, this rake, rake asks the player. Actually, that was already done there before. I knew that. So the change was that it's basically just if we can get a break cast to the player, then we can just move in a straight line towards the player, so we don't need a path. But if we don't have a hit on the player, then uh, we basically just get a path. So we need to store the path here and have a path counter. And then we basically just get the NPC to follow the path. So if this, okay, 
sorry, making a fuck up of this, but basically it's just a copy of uh, the Rome map script. But basically, if the path is null or the path length is zero, we will try and find a path from this game object to the player. And we set path counter to zero because we're at the start of the path. But if we're not, so we have some kind of path available, we basically make a check. If we are near to the last node in the path, so path found dot count minus one, because remember, arrays go from zero to, well, start at zero. Then if we're there, then we try and get another path to the player, because obviously the player's probably moved. And then again, we reset the path counter to zero. If we're not near to the end of the path, we check if we are near to the current node. So path find path found dot path count. Path found and we use the path counter as an index for checking the nodes. So if we had less than 1.5 uh meters or unity units or whatever away from that, then we will just uh check. We'll increment that basically if we're not towards at the end of the path. And if we are more than like 0 0.5 units away from the player, then we will move and to move and face towards this uh, the next point in the path. Okay, that makes sense. Good. All right, let's go on to the conversation bit now. Okay, so first up, we have the uh, conversation manager. This is basically just a uh, script that controls like the choices that the player's made and what to display. So first up, we've got a string for the starting line. This is just like a, an introduction line when the player op first opens a conversation. Uh, we've got a string for talking to. This is basically just like the name of the person you are talking to in the conversation. Uh, we've got this new class called conversation line, which I'll go over in a minute, which basically just stores all the information about a choice, you know, like uh, what gets said in response, any code that gets executed when you click a choice, stuff like that. Uh, that and basically the last selected is just the last choice that was selected. Uh, we've got a list of possible choices. So these are the choices that you have to select from when you uh, choose one. Uh, and we also got a static conversation manager for the active conversation. So you can have more than one conversation manager or multiple conversations in a scene. And this just basically makes sure that, well, this basically just stores the current conversation. So you can only have one at a time. Because you don't want to have like two conversations drawn over each other, that's not fun. It'll probably glitchy. Uh, next up, uh, conversation done is basically uh, boolean. So we can set this to true and it will say, all right, we're done with the conversation now. So we can start a timer. And once that combo done timer reaches zero, then we'll just stop displaying the conversation because it. it'll be like exiting the conversation. Uh, that's a boolean for drawing a combo. So this is basically says that we need to draw the uh, conversation in the GUI. And then we've got the normal scaling stuff that I've gone over before. And yeah. So first off, we check in the update if the conversation is done. Oh, we also have a static reference to the player. So we have like, one reference between all conversation managers because it's to the same game object. So might as well be static. So first off, if the combo done is false, so if we're not finished with the combo, we check for input and we check if we've moved from combo. So input basically means uh, if we're less than three units away, now we press E, you can enter and exit the conversation as you please. Uh, enter conversation just says, set this uh, conversation to be the active one and says that we need to draw the conversation while exit does the opposite. So it says we don't want to draw it and we're setting the active conversation to null. Uh, move from convo is basically just a check for if we're more than three units away from the object that the conversation manager is attached to and we were still drawing that conversation and the active conversation was this, then we just call the exit conversation. So like if you're moving away from someone, you're not talking to them, playing. I know. Okay. Uh, next up. Uh, yeah, so... If the combo done is true, so this will be set by like a, one of the conversation lines where uh, it'll just call combo stop when done. Uh, that simply that just uh, call, counts down the timer. And if that timer is less than or equal to zero, then it'll call exit conversation. Easy. Easy peasy. Uh, and finally, 
we got the just GUI for the uh, conversation. It's pretty simple. Uh, basically, this is all the scaling stuff, so I make sure that the, the uh, size is the same on the screen, when no matter the resolution. Uh, next up, if less selected is null, so this would basically only be true when the player has first entered the conversation because they've not made a choice yet. So it'll basically just draw a box with the uh, talking to, so it'll say who you're talking to, and the starting line. But if the player has made a choice, which will be stored in the last selected uh, variable, which is the conversation line, it will draw what the player said and what the NPC has said in response. Yeah. And finally, just draw a little background box and go through all the current conversation choices that we could say in response. And we draw a button to select them. And yeah, we don't uh, have a conversation mod here, which we basically just increment so we can draw these uh, items in a, a list sort of type deal. So let's see, I'll, I'll just show you again. Uh, we have a conversation mod that we multiply each time we draw. We have for each. Uh, item so you can see that we have two we have them in the list sorry that took a lot of explanation to say that it'd be below each other sorry i'm not with it this morning uh next up some more uh, so yeah so that's, you basically just add 50 times conversation mod and 50 is the height of the thing so it just basically draws them below each other and we get the player line from the current cl which is the whatever the current one uh, current conversation choice that you're going through in the list. So it's the conversation line. And then you just increment it here. Right, that was a coverful. Okay, so conversation line, uh, uh, basically just a container for information that you'd have in a conversation. So we've got the what the player says, uh, what the NPC replies to the player with. We also have this new class called conversation code trigger. Uh, this is basically just a virtual method uh, start here that has on trigger uh, and then you'd create child classes with whatever behavior you wanted to so in this case I have a child class that turns the NPC hostile so what we're doing is we get the weapon controller off the parent because the uh, I'll just show you in the inspector because it's on the NPC the example conversation is a child of the NPC game object so we have to uh, use the get component in parent uh, and we just pass it in the weapon prefab from the test input class and press into true because we're instantiating a new instance of it and then we add the action hunt player to the parent game objects or well, to the NPC and then we just said to be the, the well, we set this action that we've just added to be the current action so effectively we just turn the player hot the NPC hostile and they go around shooting the player. And again, and I've got another one for just leave, which instead of turning the NPC hostile, it just adds the roam map, so they'll just walk away from the player. Again, just adding it to the parent. And then we get in the NPC component and set in the current action to be the one we just added. Okay. Uh, next up on this, uh, we've got a, another a list of conversation lines within the conversation line class. Uh, these are basically just all the choices that you get after you've selected this uh, conversation line. And we've also got a boolean to say whether this is the end of the conversation or not. And finally, we've got this method, which is called select this line, which you saw here. Basically, it's just what gets triggered if you select this uh, conversation bit. And so we set the conversation manager dot active a conversation dot last selected to this. We set the current conversation choices to be the new ones that are stored in this class in this instance of the class. So these choices here. And if we have an on select, so you don't have to have a code trigger for it, then we call the on trigger method. So whatever variant or child class of the conversation code trigger we have plugged into this uh, instance of conversation line, that'll get executed. And then if it's the end of the conversation, then it will set the active conversations convo done ball to true, which then starts a timer to stop displaying the conversation. Okay. I'll just go over that again. 
I'll, well, I'll show you it actually. So as you can see, press E here and it starts displaying the stuff. We can select stuff and that'll trigger code. So he fogs off and then the conversation starts getting displayed. Simple. And he gets stuck there. So yeah, uh, that was it. I just want to have a quick word about where I'm going with this uh, tutorial series. Uh, basically, I was trying to do it in uh, three stages this time because I'm trying to sort of improve my game dev method, if that makes sense at all. Because, uh, yeah. So basically, my idea was I was going in, I'm going to do this in three stages. The first was uh, sort of get all the mechanics down sort of like as a prototype. Uh, so you'll see the tutorials, they're kind of uh, basic but functional, you know. So they work, but they could be a lot prettier, like, you know, with the GUI and stuff like that. So that was what I was going for. Uh, the second phase will be going over stuff and refining it. So say for the conversation manager we just now, we might write uh, some kind of tool to create these in the inspector, which would be a lot easier than, you know, just manually assigning all the stuff. So it's about it'd be about like refining the process of actually making content, you know, and we can at the same time we're gonna make stuff more aesthetically pleasing. So we might add animations or some effects or whatever. And you know, stuff like that. So you could leave suggestions if you wanted something like that or whatever. And the final stage will be actually creating content with the tools we've created. So that will basically allow us to test what we've made and make sure that we can work out any bugs or like inefficiencies or whatever that we find that we didn't pick up on while creating the stuff. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. And just as a small plug, if you didn't get the not so subtle hint at the uh, start of the video in the conversation, I've got a game called Loud or Quiet. It's kind of like inspired by Hotline Miami, Payday, Max Payne kind of thing. Uh, that has come out on Steam on November the 20th. So if you could take a look at that and if you want it, you know, buy it and you'll make me happy and I'll be able to keep doing this shit for ages. Or if you don't, that's cool too. You know, tell your friends and shit. All right, so just watching and goodbye.